So um, I came across something really interesting. Uh, I first came across it maybe more than a month or two ago and thought it was weird and, and didn't look into it anymore then. But then I more and more learned that hormesis is really important for healing. And so I gave it another shot and I tried it out and I really like it. Um, it's called radiation hormesis. Yeah, radiation. And I think most of us think of radiation as like something terrible from Fukushima, from nuclear power plant, from nuclear bomb. But um, it turns out that uh, radiation is much more similar to like sunshine, which is a form of radiation, in that the body does better when it has a certain amount of it in like a healthy low range. But you're better off. I mean, ton, tons of studies show a hormetic dose response curve where the health goes up to a certain point when you're getting more and then it goes down obviously when you have way, way, way too much but there's a stimulatory effect at low levels of it and I'm almost thinking that it'll turn into something if people encounter this information more will think of it as are you getting your vitamin D from sunshine and are you getting your low dose radiation as it's so critical for cell repair for getting rid of diseased old cells or cancer prevention and normalizing the antioxidant response and a lot of things that it seems to promote and uh, I'm reading a book now called Underexposed, What If Radiation Is Actually Good For You? A lot of stuff is referenced in that book. And then I'm trying it myself, I'm experimenting. I got this um, pendant from Nighthawk Minerals. And I got it and I put it on and I actually started crying because I was like, wow, this is just normalizing my body functions. And then I got more of their products today because I went ahead and bought their whole kit, which is on sale until the 25th. Um, and until January 25th, and when I got it, I just picked it up and I was like, because oh. like, you can feel the radiation coming through the box, and I was just like, oh, I'm going to be okay. I think I can tell I'm going to be okay. The nice thing is it's also antifungal. Um, somehow, I'm not sure if it's just from the stimulatory effect on the immune system, or perhaps uh, fungus isn't as able to defend against radiation as the human cells are, but um, like I feel like it's helping clear out my nasal sinus issues. When I got this as a mud pack, I just felt like, oh, I really want to put this on my sinuses and try to kill stuff in my sinuses. And I'm supposed to sleep with this and wear this. And anyway, the guy that runs it, his name is Jay, he's a really nice guy, and he talks to people for free. They'll basically assign you somebody to talk to, um, kind of like personalized advice, uh, and you, you know they'll tell you, well, if this is happening, do this. and um, but it's like having free tech support, and uh, I like it. I've, I've just been feeling great since getting it. Uh, I don't feel like I need vitamin C anymore. I used to have to have vitamin C on tap, where if I ever craved it, I would take a tube of vitamin C. I haven't taken it in days. I probably four or five days, I haven't really taken vitamin C at all. And I haven't really had mood issues since getting this. I had kind of a really bad day, day or two before I got this, and I've just been pretty happy and calm since getting it and you know we'll see if it keeps up I've been wearing this one a week and uh, it did give me a little diarrhea at first uh, you can have certain kind of body changes from it and but then the body kind of adapts to it and you're like oh okay so now I, I don't really have any kind of negative effects from it um, but yeah uh, um, I'm starting to think also just the way we think about toxins and healthy stuff needs to be updated and people, we need to be going to the research, we need to be going to PubMed. If somebody tells you this works because it detoxifies you, that's not enough of an explanation. You need to know what are the molecules involved and that's what I'm trying to do and I find that that's really helping me to make more informed decisions uh, and to know more about how the body actually works. Because we tell these stories, there's these kind of fictitious stories that get passed around we know certain things work because we've felt them ourselves and we've seen them work for other people but we might not know why they work we might think we know but we might think the wrong reason like a lot of people think infrared saunas work because they make you sweat and they sweat the toxins come out in the sweat there's not a ton of evidence for that and i know that sweat can be detoxifying but um it's just, it's a fairly minor form of detox compared to you know, regular elimination. There is a lot of evidence for uh, saunas activating heat shock proteins in there too and detox through that mechanism. And so, uh, 
and but anyway, back to what if we think of things as toxins or as beneficial. A lot of us think, well, juicing and raw food is beneficial, but you know, radiation and alcohol and uh, what else? What are some other things we think are toxic? I don't know, we were like, those are all toxins, you have to avoid toxins, and eat. but the, the truth is that pretty much all of these things, including vitamin D, vitamin A, are toxic and can be toxic at high levels, and polyphenols are basically toxic, and a lot of the kind of healthy foods include toxins, and that's why they're healthy, because they're toxic and they stimulate the body to respond to toxins, they turn on those mechanisms. And the same goes for, you know, low-dose radiation and for um, even alcohol, if, if you're able to tolerate, which I can now, if you just have a low amount, like a half a drink or a drink, um, stimulates a lot of body repair. And uh, I'm trying to figure out exactly what's what's the right level for that, but it feels like a very powerful um, mechanism. I know that it can stimulate candida and all that, so it's not really for everybody, but uh, we, I think we need to stop... Th- Basically, it was known a long time ago that most things, you know, even Greek times or homeopathy times, you know, that most things have the the, the poison depends on the dose, and um, and it's just you need to find the right dose of most things. And there wasn't so much this like black and white thinking. So anyway, yeah, look look it up, read the read the book. It's only a dollar for the Kindle edition, and you can uh, read it on Kindle Cloud Reader if you don't have a Kindle. It's a great book. And uh, read about radiation hormesis. You can read it. Even the U.S. government is doing research on it. And, um, don't read Wikipedia on it, though, because Wikipedia is terrible. And I, I just, I realize Wikipedia is just terrible on, like, most controversial issues, including most health issues. And so, um, yeah. Wikipedia, there's another site called Wikipediocracy that goes into the structural flaws of Wikipedia and how it just is terrible to have so much anonymous editing and even anonymous overseeing of those editors. Like the, the senior editors, are many of them are anonymous too. And so you really don't know like who... Wikipedia is not like the consensus. It's just some strange people that happen to spend a lot of time on Wikipedia or that are paid to try to influence public opinion through Wikipedia. And... Um, it's just crazy stuff happens behind the scenes. Um, it's it could it could be good if they had better overseeing, you know, and more transparency. But it's who knows what's happening, you know. And um, it's unfortunate because people think it's credible, but it's not. And a lot of I mean, I know of course in academia people know it's not credible, but a lot of Regular people do think it's credible, so they'll go on there and they'll say, oh, well, gee, this thing you just told me is absolutely wrong. Like, no, Wikipedia is not right. Trust me, it's not right. So, um, I, I haven't even really read the page on radiation hormesis on there, but um, I, I think my boyfriend did. He said it wasn't very favorable, so don't worry. Things can be true, even if uh, Wikipedia says some blatantly, like, there's no evidence, blah, blah, blah. So just look for yourself. Read PubMed instead of Wikipedia.